Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We've got a request for creating this abstract swirling ball in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by CGShortcuts.Courses, our online training platform where you can take your motion graphic skills to the next level. We've got an ever-growing range of courses in the same straight-to-the-point, easy-to-follow format of our YouTube videos. Each course also comes with loads of project files and downloadable assets, as well as support directly from the course instructor. Our YouTube subscribers get 5% off all courses with the code YouTube5, so check it out today. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so this tutorial was requested by Artem Buryak, who's one of our amazing patrons over on Patreon. Artem wanted to know how to create this abstract swirly effect created by Daniel over at Best Serve Cold in Bristol in the UK. There's a link below to where you can check out some of their awesome CG work. And if you'd like to request a tutorial, there's also details below as to how to do that. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can do this. Okay, so let's quickly set up our scene here. We'll change the project settings to 24 frames per second. And we'll also change that up here in the render settings. And we'll be rendering this effect with the Octane plugin. So if you have that, you'll also want to switch that on here. Then we'll close that. And head up here and bring in a sphere. Then over here in our spheres object tab, we want to load more segments in here so we can deform this. So let's crank this up to 200. And we know by now changing the type to hexahedron will give us much more evenly spaced geometry. So let's change that too. And just to make sure that's looking good, we'll switch on the lines and you can see we've got a nice dense mesh to deform. So let's do exactly that. We'll head over to the deformers menu and we're going to use the displacer deformer. And if we hold shift when we bring that in, it should automatically be applied to our sphere. So now we need something to drive our displacement. So we'll click on the shading tab here and onto this little arrow and we'll go with the noise shader. And that's giving us some deformation straight away. So let's refine our noise. If we click on this little noise thumbnail here, we can choose another type. Let's try the VL noise. Then we'll crank up the global scale and we'll try 1000%, which does make us lose that detail. But if we scroll down here and turn our cycles up, let's try eight. We start to get this cool pattern on the surface of our sphere. So now we want this effect to be animated. So we'll turn the animation speed up to one. And because we want it to loop, we also want to use the loop period. So if our animation is 72 frames long, that gives us three seconds at 24 frames a second. So we'll put a three in here, which tells Cinema 4D to loop the noise every three seconds. So let's give that a play. And that's looking cool. And after three seconds, we get our loop. Okay, let's go back a level here. And I think this effect might be a little bit too intense. So back in the object tab, let's try halving the height to five centimeters. And that's starting to look a bit closer to the example, but we can actually get a bit fancier than this and we'll add in another deformer. So with our sphere selected, we'll come back up here and this time we'll bring in a formula deformer instead. Just remember to hold shift when you bring that in as well. And straight out of the box, it gives us a pretty cool looking effect. Let's see how this looks animated. We're getting this really cool undulating effect. And you could play around with this and get completely different effects. But for this example, we actually wanna make this a bit more subtle. So over here, we'll actually start by increasing the size in the vertical direction. Let's bring the Y value up to 250. And then we'll change the speed of the formula here by bringing this part at the end down to 0.05. And that's definitely making things look a bit more organic. And rather than having it going straight up and down, let's head back over to the coordinates tab and we'll just rotate our formula deformer to the side a bit. Let's try negative 35 degrees in here. All right, so that's pretty much the effect. So you could stop there and texture this up. But this time we're going to carry on with a quick Octane setup. So let's head up to our plugins and fire up the Octane Live Viewer. And a lot of people are still using Octane version three. So just for you, we'll do the same this time. Let's start this up 
and we'll add a HDRI environment. Then we'll go in here and grab a HDR map and you can use whichever one you want. We're gonna go with this one. And we might just need to resend that to the render so it shows up. Okay, let's have a quick look at the Octane settings. Let's change the kernel to path tracing and we'll bring the samples down to 400 and we'll set the diffuse depth and the specular depth to eight and we'll bring the GI clamp down to four. And down the bottom here, we'll turn on adaptive sampling as well. Then back up here, we'll go to the camera imager tab and we'll bring the gamma up to 2.2 and the response to linear and we'll turn that vignetting down to zero. And we might also bring the hot pixel removal to 0.4 so we don't get any fireflies. Then we'll close this and we can frame our sphere up a bit. Let's actually dock this window over here. And we could even bring in an octane camera and we'll switch that on. Then we'll zero out the coordinates. And I think we might go with a longer lens to flatten this out a bit. Let's switch over to the 80 millimeter. Okay, that's looking good. Now we want a nice white background behind our sphere. So we're going to bring in a texture environment and we'll change the type to visible environment so we can see it, but it doesn't affect our lighting. And we don't want that to be pure white. So let's go into here and we'll change the value to 90%. Okay. So let's quickly rename these so we can keep everything nice and tidy. This one is our HDRI and this guy is our visible environment. Okay, now we're ready to create a material for our sphere. And we're going for the same look from our example. So let's bring in a glossy material and we'll apply that to our sphere. Then we'll open this guy and edit this in the node editor. And let's just make a bit of room here so we can see both of these windows. We actually don't need any color in this material. So we can switch the diffuse channel off completely. And we'll head over to the index tab. We wanna change this value to one so it becomes reflective like a mirror. And so it's not perfectly CG reflective. Let's head over here and add a tiny bit of roughness. Let's try a value of 0.08. And then to get that rainbowy kind of effect from the example, we'll bring up our film index. Let's make this guy 1.25. And it doesn't look like much has changed just yet, but we can actually colorize our film layer with a gradient node. So let's connect one of those up to the film width. And we can change the colors here. Let's make this one blue. And we'll make this guy red. And that gives us a pretty psychedelic look. So we're almost there. We'll just rename this guy. Let's just call it metal. And we'll close this. So now we wanna smooth out our deformation a bit. So with our sphere selected, we'll head over to tags, octane tags, and bring in an octane object tag. Then we'll move this out of the way. And under the subdivision group tab, we can bring up the subdivision level to two. And that should smooth things out a bit when it refreshes, like so. So now we wanna mix this material with another material. So we'll bring in a specular material as well. And we'll override our metal material with this new specular material so we can see what that looks like. Then we'll open that guy in the node editor as well. Then we also wanna change its index. Let's make that 1.56. And we'll head over here as well and switch on fake shadows. This will let some extra light pass through our material. And we'll also bring in a little bit of roughness. Let's set this to something like 0.2. And we'll rename this guy as well. Let's just call it glass. So now we wanna mix these two materials together. So we need to bring in an octane mix material. And if we grab our new mix material and load it into the node editor, and we also need to apply this to our sphere over the glass material. We can head over to the mix tab here and we just need to bring both materials into this. So we'll put our glass material into material one slot and we'll put the metal material into slot two. And if we tidy this up a bit, we can use the float texture to adjust the amount of mixing. 
Let's bring this over this way and maybe we'll make this an even 0.7. Okay, we're almost there. Let's close this for now. And we're going to use a bit of a different technique to brighten up these colors. Let's dock this window again and we'll head back to our HDRI. We're actually going to recolor this guy. If we click on the arrow down here, we can go to our octane shaders and layer in a gradient. And if we go into that, we can remap these colors. Let's give this one a nice warm pinkish color like in the example. And this one can be a nice bright blue. Something like that. And you can use whatever color scheme you want. And that's looking pretty close. But finally, we can add a bit more light in here to make this guy look a bit shinier. So let's bring in an octane area light and we'll just scale that guy and reposition it up above our sphere. Something like that. Then we'll go over here and click on the light tag and switch the type to texture and we'll bring the power down. Then we'll duplicate this guy and zero out the coordinates. Then we wanna reposition this guy to the left of the sphere. And we might bring the power of this guy down to one. And finally, we'll make one last copy. And this guy is going to be to the right of the sphere. Only we want this one to be more of a fill light. So we'll angle this one. Something like that. And we want this guy to be a bit brighter. So we'll make the power three. And then we can play that back. And that is pretty much the effect. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And you can also get the render ready project file with all the Octane materials ready to go from our Patreon page. And that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.